So if you're struggling with your build time, and if you're struggling with Webpack performance, HMR performance, and you're having really, really bad developer experience whenever you're working on your Webpack projects, well, in this particular video, we will try to explore the capabilities and performance of using Vit. So Vit is a really awesome bundler. It's actually brand new and it's been created by the creator of Vue.js. And it actually has been used for Vue.js for quite some time. Now it's actually ported into other stuff. And mainly what cares or what we care more about is React.js and TypeScript and everything. So Vit works really, really flawlessly with all of those. In fact, it has a lot of stuff. It has a lot of kind of templates with TypeScript and everything from vanilla JavaScript to Preact to Svelte and so much and so much more. So why Vit is actually special because it uses ESBuild, which is another bundler behind the scenes. And this bundler is using it depending on the benchmarks provided to actually bundle and build your application compared to other bundlers. So Vit is not just like another bundler, it's actually much, much more than that. It has a lot of features, for example, lining fast HMR, an optimized build, it actually has a zero config, so you don't have to put the configuration or explicitly tell it to configure something. Otherwise, it just like has everything built in already, for example, SAS support, uh, CSS preprocessors, maybe you want TypeScript, maybe you want modules, maybe you want so many stuff, actually, they are already built in, and it actually has this plugin kind of ecosystem same way as Rollup does. So if you're familiar with Rollup, actually Vit is based or developed up in Rollup. So it uses Rollup behind the scenes to bundle your stuff and actually put them together. But it actually adds a lot more stuff, a lot more layers, a lot more features, a lot more options and configurations you can use in order to make it like, you know, the best bundler you can actually use for. Plus it has this really crazy performance. So you can just, you know, put your hands on this really awesome tool with really, really nice performance and lightning fast HMR and build into production so you can just you know use this tool with confidence so if you're wondering vit basically does the same thing as webpack but it actually has this really enriched features and it makes it a lot easier to scaffold and create the applications and like webpack so if we try to do a quick comparison between the classic bundlers maybe like webpack and parcel versus the esm bundlers which are like vit and maybe snowpack too so for example here if we take a look into this one we actually regard this from the documentation of vit so this is actually a bundle based dev server. So this is like an HTML or a dev server, or it's it's basically the Webpack's dev server. So what it does is actually bundles your stuff into a single bundle. It puts all of those, it puts like, for example, the entry, let's say you've got like multiple routes, maybe a login page, maybe a landing page, maybe an about page. All those routes are going to be put together and they're going to have dependencies of modules. They will be all, all like just bundled together in here. And eventually they're going to be put into a single bundle. And this is actually the eventual final bundle. Then this bundle will be just like served into the server, then your browser can download this particular bundle every single time. And every single time you do a change for your developer experience, whenever you do like change something quickly in control S, this bundle is going to recreate it from scratch. Of course, there's some mechanism to update only what's changed. And that's what HMR is, but it's still very, very slow compared to how Vit does it. So if you go to the other hand in here of how native ESM based dev server, which is Vits or Snowpack basically, but I'm going to talk more about Vits in this particular case. So it's going to do like in here is going to the server, you got the server in here, this is actually the start point. And Vits, what it does is going to provide the server with only the entry point. It's not going to provide it with the whole bundle of all the dependencies, all the modules, all the routes and all your code nothing like that. It's only going to provide the entry point, which is, for example, like the index.js, and it's just going to give it that. Now, later on, because our browsers are ESM compatible, and what I mean by ESM is actually ECMAScript modules. It's something like import and export as defaults or export defaults. It's not like the common JS where Node.js uses that syntax with the require. So this is more like the import. And nowadays, like most of browsers support ESM and why not benefit from that? So in this particular case in here, it provides them an entry point, which is an ESM entry point. Then of course you can do like code splitting with using dynamic imports. You can do React lazy splitting, maybe suspense anything you want to do in that particularly. So it's going to do all of that, but the server is going to take care of loading those separately on every single request. So it's not going to load all the bundles. It's only going to load the routes by itself and the browser is going to do that by itself. So it's going to only load the routes that it needs without loading the whole bundle. And that's going to make it a lot, a lot more faster. It's going to be like hundred X faster. If you, if you have like this really big project running both on VIT, 
bits and like ESM approach versus running on classic bundlers. So to set up and create a VIP project, it's actually pretty, pretty simple. So you can imagine this approach the same way if you're using the create react app CLI, but it's actually a lot more simpler. Plus it provides a lot of templates. What I mean by a lot of templates, you can, you can scaffold and create TypeScript, React, uh, vanilla JavaScript or TypeScript. Maybe you want Vue.js and Svelte maybe as well. And it's, it's actually really, really awesome. So uh, what I'm going to tell you in here, what I'm going to be able to do, I'm going to use Yarn. You can use NPM, you can use PNPM, whatever, but I'm going to use Yarn. I'm going to use the create command. So the create command in here, you, you instruct it what you want to create. Now you want to create actually do just create vit. So you simply provide it with a project's name in here. For example, vit projects. And the next thing here is going to tell you, oh, which framework you want to use vanilla JavaScript, Vue.js, React, Preact, and so on and so forth. So once you click on that, it's going to tell you which preset you want to use React with JavaScript or React with TypeScript, which I absolutely love this option because once you select React with TypeScript, everything is going to be set up for you. The TS config JSON, everything with Vint, with TypeScript. So you just with a single button click with a single command, you can start your dev servo and you can start enjoying your development workflow. So if you open up the projects in your favorite code editor, mine is VS code in here, and you head over to the configuration vent.config.js or TypeScript, sorry, you're going to find this really simple and straightforward configuration. So it uses the define config from vent and it basically uses the react plugin in order to tell it, oh, we're using react with TypeScript and everything. And that is it. That's simply all you need to do to scaffold at React, the TypeScript projects, and everything is actually will be included behind the scenes. Of course, you can add more plugins, more stuff into it. You can configure this. And since he uses Rollup, you can configure all the options that Rollup accepts throughout the VIT configuration as well. So the second thing you want to take a look in here is actually back to JSON. I want to see what are the scripts. There is the dev, which is going to open up a dev server using HMR and everything. There is a build, which is going to run TSC for type checking, and it's going to do VIT build. And finally, there's a preview of the VIT build that is, you know, this is going to create a production ready VIT build. So let's go ahead and try the first one, which is yarn dev. So I'm going to just do yarn dev in here, and this should go in and start it. And as you see, it's absolutely crazy fast. So as soon as you click on that, as soon as you run the command, you're going to have like 631 milliseconds for the server to start. And if you head over to this, you're going to find the application up and running for you. And it's just that simple. So once you click it, there you go. The application is already running and you've got your application and this dev server took absolutely less than that to basically scaffold and boot up. So if you want to get your hands on in the awesome feature HMR, which is quite fast and you see like you want to take a look on how fast this is. So for example, we've got the server running here side by side and we got the web page. So let's try to go ahead and change something and see how fast it is. So maybe add awesome and as soon as I control S, this is just appearing on the browser and you get this HMR update in here telling you, oh, you did an HMR update and we did it so quick. So you can change whatever. As soon as you click, you get that. Of course, I'm with you. Maybe you're saying, oh, this is a, just a small boilerplate application. It's not that big of a deal. That's why you're applying that. Yes, you're right because it's really small, and lightweight and Webpack, even Webpack can do it that fast. Maybe the Create React app can slightly do it a little bit um, kind of like slower than this, but it's actually still uh, really fast on all these cases. But what I'm going to do right now is actually compare all of those with the real world scenarios with real world applications that are big applications. Uh, they have a lot of code, a lot of stuff, a lot of routes and all that sort of stuff and see how it does with VIT versus Webpack and versus the Create React app and see all of them side by side, how they work perfectly in this like benchmarking test. So for the comparison here, we got two projects. One is a VIT projects in here, as you in here, this is what the VIT project looks like. This is the VIT configuration. And it's actually a Twilio application. So this is actually a Twilio sample application. I cloned it and have it from the Twilio's uh, open source GitHub page. So you can clearly see in here, it has a lot of dependencies, a lot of stuff like video, WebRTC, so many stuff and so many big dependencies. Uh, plus it uses some TensorFlow models to basically change the background and, and so many stuff. Now the second project is actually set up using Webpack, which is this service in platform, which is as well a big platform. So for example, here, let's try to change this particular text in here. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and add now and I'm going to do control S to see how that does. Can you see now Webpack started building? It took a couple of seconds, like two seconds, I say, where this is actually, you know, it, it got applied. Can you see just the simple HMR thing, it took us that much. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, maybe this one updated as well. I'm going to try it for the second time, control S, couple seconds, then the updated one appears. 
pretty simple, but that's still pretty decent as well. So when it comes to development and everything, that's totally fine. But this project is big, but not that really, really big one. If you have got this legacy, very big projects, Webpack is going to struggle and it's going to take much more time to actually apply those HMR updates. Why? Because it simply just uses the bundle stuff as we've seen before compared to how ESM modules where VIT uses or utilizes the ESM modules kind of feature to optimize the build and to make it a little bit more performance. Plus, it would apply HMR updates a lot more faster. Okay, now the second one is we got the VIT in here, which is the Twilio sample app. Let's try to go ahead and change the simple text as well. I'm going to add welcome in here. I'm going to control S and you can just go ahead and see the HTML in here. So as soon as control S, it just immediately applies to the browser in a, just a very quick thing. Yes, um, you're going to probably tell me, oh, the projects are different. Yes, they are different, but this project is actually a lot more complicated than the other projects because it uses a lot of stuff. It has a lot of dependencies. For the dependencies, this one has to basically bundle. It has like almost like 4,000 and more dependencies bundled compared to the other one. It has only 2,000. So it's actually half size. It's not that big of a deal to actually compare with dependencies, but this project is very, very big projects and it's very complicated projects with a lot of dependencies. And and yet, VIT could handle it absolutely perfectly with HMR and actually could do all of that in a simple stuff. So as you know, control S, as you see, it's very immediate. It takes less than a second. It's absolutely crazy how VIT is fast with HMR. On the other hand, if you want to see like, oh, what is the effect of taking or actually doing a lot of change? For example, removing a huge chunk of code in here. For example, I'm going to remove this one. And uh, I'm going to remove this one as well. I'm going to add something in here, maybe like return um, or not return. Sorry. I'm going to add div. I'm going to say hello word. Everything was deleted or something. Excuse me. I deleted a lot of code. I added this line of code in here. And let's go in and control S and see what it does. Hallelujah. It's that fast. It's crazy fast. And if you're shocked the same way I am in here, I was shocked actually when I tried VIT for the first time. I actually tried it with this, this sample Twilio application and tried it with different projects. And it was just insane compared how VIT is fast compared to something like Webpack. And to see the ES build or the ESM ecosystem in action compared to how Webpack does it in a single bundle versus how VIT does it in using ESM to basically exchange that and actually just allow the browser to do or take care of everything by providing him or providing the actual browser the actual file itself without bundling or changing. So for example, in here, if we take a look on the VIT app, on the network tab, we see the browser is going to do a lot of requests. One of these requests, for example, the app.tsx, it's actually requesting the app.tsx. It's requesting the main application, the same app.tsx that's in here. Take a look on the source code. It's basically the same. It's like 90% the same. There's only small, slight, small changes that VIT does to make it work perfectly with the browser support but it's still all working. It has the import in here, import from React refresh in here, and it does all of that perfectly using all of those. And it just like works so, so well. It's actually, for example, the index in here, the theme, it's actually importing all of those. It's importing the separate modules by itself and the browser is handling all of those. And that's actually why VIT is a lot faster when it comes to H HMR because it's doing all of that by itself. It's actually loading the standalone modules. It's not rebundling them like Webpack is doing. It's actually like, you know, not doing H any HMR function like updates or WebSockets or any of that because the browser is handling everything. If you jump over to Webpack, you're going to see a complete different stuff. The network tab in here says, oh, Webpack is trying to request a different chunks. And each one of these chunks is actually having a different source of code. And of course, your your code is actually among this rubbish code in here, which you absolutely can't understand because Webpack tries to bundle that, tries to add support and yada, yada, yada. So it adds all of those in here. So that's why you see, oh, that's why Webpack is taking a lot longer when it comes to HMR. Plus the builds are taking longer when it comes to production builds and so many stuff. On the other hand, if you say, oh, what about React Script or the Create React app? Since the Create React app uses Webpack behind the scenes and it adds a little bit more sluggish code into it, it's less performant than Webpack, which means it's actually less performance and slower compared to VIT. 
So for example, we've got this particular project in here, which is the Twilio project, the same way, which is the VIT one in here, the same project, absolutely the same one. But in this case, we are using Create React app to bundle everything. So first things thing, what I would do is actually go ahead and try Yarn to start the development server. So I'm going to do Yarn and start dev, which is going to call React Script Start. So I'm gonna, as soon as I click enter, let's see how long this is going to take. It is going to take a pretty decent amount of time. We all know Create React app is going to take forever. But if you compare this to VIT, the last time we run this particular command, it took us like milliseconds to run this, which is absolutely crazy. And it actually took more than 30 seconds, absolutely 30 seconds to start the development server. I'm not talking about HMR, but I'm talking about more of the development server to actually start. So if you compare this to VIT, if you go to this VIT project in here, which is the same project, and do yarn dev, which is going to do VIT and start the HMR development server, you click VIT and just wait a couple of seconds and it took 1815 milliseconds around two seconds and just like this is because it's a cold start so it doesn't take that but if you compare it to create react app it's absolutely crazy the other thing i want to quickly go ahead and test is actually the production final build of both of these or three of those which is vent versus webpack and versus the create react app which utilizes webpack behind the scenes so i'm going to go ahead and try to use three of those i'm going to go ahead and just do yarn build and see how long all of these are going to take compared to the build command of, of all of this or comparing vent to both of them so i'm going to run the, the yarn build in here as well and let's go ahead and start all of those i'm going to start with the create react app in here i'm going to go in and like start this one first then start the webpack then finally start the vid so i'm going to click enter in here enter in top enter in there so there's absolutely not much of difference but as you see vid it has already started transpiling and this is just crazy webpack not really or just it got started the create react app I don't know what's wrong with the creator, app, but it's actually still really, really late to the party. And uh, I don't think it's actually going to make it. I think Vid is going to make it first, but uh, we're going to go ahead and see, like comparing to all of those. Webpack is actually pretty good in here compared to Vid and how much there is. And I see because in here, in here as I said before, it has like 4,000 dependencies that it needs to include. Plus it's going to do the typings, plus it's going to do the, the, the TypeScript stuff. While Webpack is going to do the TypeScript stuff in here, but it's not going to do the same way as vit in here because it's going to generate the whole tree so vit finished it's it's actually finished just like compared to webpack oh look at that hallelujah it actually finished compared to the others and this is actually the twilio stuff and this is this is the other stuff and webpack just finished after that after like a couple of seconds so of course we got the lead after 70 or 68 seconds we got the first one which is vit after 84 seconds of running this we got webpack and after 75 seconds we got the create react app finished and as you can see the benchmark is is clearly like 20 seconds or even more than that vit is clearly winning compared to all like the others in here